The bulk of exposure sites in lockdown are the essentials, the supermarkets and the pharmacies. And now the push to vaccinate those frontline staff who do such a crucial job. One of the few thrills we have left, grocery shopping. It's been the epicentre of some of our finest pandemic moments. And also the place of some of our greatest worries when it comes to the spread of COVID. The vast, vast majority of supermarket workers have been on the edge of their seat waiting. We have frontline workers, we have people that come in non-stop, we have drivers that come in non-stop, we have reps and everyone else, so we should be vaccinated fully. I mean, I, I feel safe, but definitely it would be a bit better if I was vaccinated. Today, a fresh delivery from the New South Wales government. Grocery workers in five hotspot areas of Sydney will get the Pfizer vaccine. A jab to keep them safe, a jab to keep them working. But does it go far enough? This is the Cansey Centre, a shopping mall in Sydney's southwest, which right now is one of the state's biggest health concerns. For the past 11 days, COVID cases have come and gone. And now thousands of shoppers have been told to stay home and isolate. As for those who work here, try telling them they're not on the front line. We are at the front line since COVID-19 is stopped. Priti and Raj Mirotra operate and work at an IGA supermarket in Sydney South. We try our best to, to uh, just to follow the government guidelines here, but you know it's very difficult sometimes to convince people that uh, <laughs> you know it's uh, you have to wear mask and uh, you have to um, scan QR code. There are people they try to argue, they try to. Uh, have uh, arguments with you, but uh, that's OK. While their store at Bexley has so far escaped the COVID outbreak, like many in this industry, they know a case could walk through the door at any moment. They not only worry about their store, but also their staff, especially when they leave for the day. It's not only the young people are getting, they're making their family safe as well, because if they are safe and they are going back home, their parents are not that young, so it is, it's very, very good. We, 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 they are treating us as a frontline workers. They've welcomed the government's latest vaccine commitment. Very good idea, very good idea. At least we will be safe. It's taken far, far too long to get here, but that some essential supermarket workers are starting to get access to vaccines is a good thing but certainly it needs to be spread out to all supermarket workers. Multiple unions have been campaigning for essential retail workers to be treated like doctors and nurses. So these workers are being put at risk. They have an entitlement to a healthy and safe workplace. Josh Cullinan's from the Retail and Fast Food Union. These aren't just essential workers. These are our mums and dads, our brothers and sisters. Uh, these workers need an opportunity to be able to get vaccinated. And whilst this change enables some to get vaccinated, there are far, far too many across Sydney, across New South Wales and across Australia that still don't have an opportunity to get vaccinated. Here at IGA Pullenvar, we serve over 5,000 customers a week. So, yeah, I, I believe we should be entitled, yes. Brisbane-based IGA owner Mark Witten's been able to secure a vaccine booking, but most of his colleagues haven't. He says it makes sense for essential workers to be a priority. I'm looking forward to being vaccinated. I'll be a lot more comfortable at work when I, when I am vaccinated. A supermarket worker is more important because they can't work from home than, for instance, an accountant or a lawyer that can work from home of the same age. Infectious disease expert Professor Peter Collignon. But the reality is Pfizer is in stools in short supply. So in the short term, when you've got shortage of the vaccine, you've got to prioritise it. And essential workers should be higher up the queue than non-essential workers. But for now, there's no plans. Workers just have to trust our shoppers are doing the right thing. Like doctors, they're meeting in the hospital. We are meeting every day, different people. So we should do. Yeah, they do crucial work. 
While our biggest city notches up record-breaking COVID numbers, Melbourne and the rest of Victoria are just hours away from the end of their latest lockdown. Tonight, their message to Sydney siders. This is our war that we never had. A tale of two cities separated by a thousand kilometres, which right now seems a world away. My parents lived through two wars. I guess this is our war. In Sydney, there's no end in sight, while in Melbourne, midnight brings a moment of reprieve. We always love welcoming our patrons back. The most important thing punters can do for hospitality tomorrow morning, wake up with love and kindness in their hearts and a spring in their step, rush off to their local and spend like crazy. Salvatore Malatesta is owner of Santali, a pioneer in Melbourne's coffee scene. The truth is I'm like a helpline for hospital workers. I get phone calls every day from, you know, from operators. Like many, his South Melbourne cafes taken a battering. Every time we close, any money anyone's made while we're open is consumed keeping it afloat, right? So for us, every, every reopening is like opening a new restaurant. Oh, we can't wait. Our tanks are full, the chefs are prepping in the kitchen a beautiful parmigiana. Around the corner at the George Hotel, you can't wipe the smile off publican Vivian Ryan's face. So this hasn't changed in a while? No, not, not for most of this year actually, yeah. Which is quite sad. It is sad, but it's all glass half empty, glass half full. So we look at the welcome back component more than the fact that it sat there for a couple of lockdowns this year. <laughs> While this is good news for the hospitality industry, trade will still be restricted over coming weeks. There'll be a cap of one patron for every four square metres or a total of 100 people indoors or 300 out. For us, it's half the capacity, um, but more so it's just not being able to lean up against the bar. Tomorrow's reopening will be bittersweet with our northern neighbours stuck in a vortex of uncertainty. Keep strong, um, be supportive of one another and know that soon enough your doors will open again to people who just love you so much. You need to stay strong, um, and if you've got loyal customers and loyal staff, you're going to make it through. It's, you're going to get there, but it's going to be a tough ride. Perhaps not as united in their messages today, those in charge, sparking a war of words between Premiers Daniel Andrews and Gladys Berejiklian. Everything we did is worth trying in Sydney right now. And I appreciate, uh, pe appreciate people want to make comparisons. I've been too busy to pick up the phone to talk to Gladys Berejiklian about these matters. We have our own course here in New South Wales. The bickering, it doesn't help, right? Like, this is not a partisan, this is not a political play, this is a, a pandemic which affects people. To be honest, it's quite daunting, and I know my staff are probably mentally fatigued as well. At the Ugly Duckling in Richmond, co-owner Daniel Vidanovsky tells us they haven't had enough warning to be able to reopen tomorrow. We're really going to take our time reopening. I know the phone's been ringing off the hook about people wanting to make a booking. From midnight, there'll no longer be five reasons for Victorians to leave home, with schools, gyms and hairdressers to reopen. Masks will remain mandatory indoors and out, a sign of just how quickly things can change. Everyone knows that the local support is more important now than ever. We need punters to support us and if we get that support we'll make it through the pandemic and if we don't a lot of people won't.